Jellystone is a brand new series that just hit HBO Max and it's been tossed around in the comments section lately. He's smarter than the average bear. In fact, he's a doctor? Yep, Yogi and a ton of other characters live together and can't help but to make trouble for one another. Sounds super interesting for sure. Plus, we're going to be learning about and breaking down some of the crazy medical type situations and injuries that happen in this show. And discussing just how accurate the medicine being practiced at Jellystone Hospital is. But before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Jellystone is the 13th <laughs> safest city in the county. Oh my gosh, okay, don't go to the 13th safest. I like how they had a number one and they added the three. No. Oh, a little trauma. No. Whoa. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> I guess it's not working. Oh no, these people are suffering from a yeah. critical case of bouncitosis. Oh my gosh, they need to triage these, you know, basically different triage protocols, who's sick, who's not sick, kind of move through them fast if you have limited resources. We need What do I do, picnic basket? Just focus on triage, boo boo. Yeah, We're gonna have to go. pick winners and losers. <laughs> it's not winners and losers. It's basically, is somebody having imminent death? Unfortunately, you can't do anything for them. Are they having a life threatening injury? That's your first. Do they have an injury, but they're stable? And then do they have like minor injuries, that sort of thing? And then are they totally fine? So these are different triage levels. Am I gonna be all right, Doc? Of course you are. Notify his next of Oh no. So notifying the next of kin meaning like imminent death, potentially. Not quite yet. Hey, Yogi. Yogi. Ah, uh, this kitty cat's here to doctor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nice. Whoa. We actually use glue a lot. We have medical glue. Sometimes you can use crazy glue. Okay. I bet Yogi Bear was kissing him because it's like everybody feels better when you get your boo-boo kissed, right? Ow, 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 ow. Oh, nice. A big whopping band-aid. Thank you, Yogi. Well, off you go. Nice, good job, Yogi. Thanks for all your help, Yogi. Oh my gosh. I like the way that they use their band-aids and, you know, bandaging everybody up. But it was a good example of how you actually end up doing triage. Yogi, just pick one. It's cafeteria food. Yeah, they all have hair in them. <laughs> when I became a doctor, I took a solemn oath to make every meal count. Yogi Bear is wearing a hat and ties. Typically, like internal medicine doctors, family medicine doctors do. As an ER doctor, we don't because we risk it being used against us. We deal with patients that might be a little agitated or angry and they might try to grab at it and give something, I mean, they can choke us. It gives them something to grab onto. I don't want to lay awake at night thinking, what if, what if I had gotten that milky chicken? I can't live with that kind of regret. I've worked in a lot of hospitals. Some have awesome cafeterias, some have not so good cafeterias. Some provide food for doctors and some don't. It all just depends. Look. Why don't you sleep on it? And tomorrow, the answer will present itself. What? Uh, that's a good idea. I'm not gonna think about this anymore. Chicken <laughs> beef! Was it having like an anxiety reaction? So doctors could have anxiety or panic attacks. Give them some Xanax, which you can give in somebody who's having a panic attack. It's a quick on and quick off. Doesn't last a long time. But what the heck is happening here? It is doing a sedative. <laughs> oh, there's the sedative right there. Okay. We, we, yeah, we don't smash people in the faces. It's not like one person can even eat all those meals. Amazing as he is, even Yogi has limits. Well, I spit in the face of limits. Now, prep three. <laughs> I have a plan. What? Wakey, wakey, wakey. What did they do? What did they do? What did they do? Whoa, is that like a reactor? Could that also be a radiation symbol? What the heck did she implant in his body? You crazy Buddha witch! No, no, no. <laughs> I like their choice of sedative is a frying pan. There's a lot of other medical choices or medication choices out there, including Ativan, Xanax. These are all different names of medications that we potentially use to calm people down if they're quite agitated. I'm not gonna have to use this again, am I? No, no, I'm cool, I'm cool. So, uh, what is this, uh, doohickey you put in me? Doohickey is the technical term. I prefer to call it a <laughs> nuclear stomach. Oh, it's a nuclear stomach. So let's see what the heck is a nuclear stomach. 
It generates an infinite void so you can eat as much as you like and never get full. What? You can't have a nuclear stomach. But interestingly, like if you eat too much, you're getting crazy amount of nutrients or your sugar is going to go through the roof. These are things that my nerd brain runs to. Oh, thank you, Cindy. That's the nicest, most amazing thing anyone's ever done for me. I gave you a kidney. <laughs> The greatest gift somebody ever gave to him. And the other guy's like, dude, I gave you my kidney. Like, come on. That is a huge gift. You're giving somebody an organ versus like, oh, I can eat everything under the sun. I am a father. A father with a daughter who's got a gift. A gift of music that will lift your spirits and soothe your soul. Different hospitals have different ways to make patients feel better. Sometimes they have therapy dogs that go around. Or you can have singing, play games, all different things to try to bring the spirits of patients that they try to heal. Ain't it, sweetie? Kitten around, I'm just kitten around. Hey, look what I found. The She's a little dog, a sing about being a little cat. How Not cute really, is that? <laughs> oh gosh, it was so bad, it caused her to have a heart attack. Ah! Everyone, stand back, we're doctors. And we're about to do doctor type two. Cardiac arrest. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, good job, Yogi Bear. Put your stethoscope on the face. Sometimes we put the stethoscope in weird places, including like your neck. You're listening for high-pitched noises, narrowing of your airway. We also listen on the stomach for bowel sounds, making sure everything is working and moving. This patient has experienced some sort of musical trauma. <laughs> but boom. The sound of the monitor is telling us that she's either not breathing or doesn't have a heartbeat and they're doing nothing. So remember, if the monitor says not breathing, check for breathing. If the monitor says that there's no heartbeat, check for pulse. Then act accordingly. Prepare for extraction. Okie dokie, Dr. Yogi. I'm just kidding around. Hey, Get rid of the music. Complete. <laughs> <gasps> Ew. Wow. It's what we do, for we are the doctors of Jellystone Hospital. Jelly also, Stone here's Hospital. Your bill for $10,000. <gasps> Whoa. Yes, hospital bills. That's a whole can of worms that we're not going to get into. Doctors have nothing really to do with knowing the billing situations in hospitals. I don't get paid more or less depending on what I order. I just do what's appropriate for the patient. Open wide. <laughs> Some teeth. Okay. <laughs> it's Looks so like. hard to get people to open up their mouths to look in there. And actually, it's very interesting. You open up your mouth and you say, ah, right? When you say, ah, you actually drop your tongue down so you can actually see easier into the back of the throat. Pretty interesting, right? Hand me my tiny hammer. Tiny hammer. Hi. Nice. Uh, checking for deep tendon reflexes. I don't see a knee there and he's smacking really hard. You don't have to hit that hard. On the knee, you're hitting basically the patella tendon to make sure that there is good nerve connection from the spinal cord back to the limb that you're hitting. It's like a basic nerve function. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing music. She's alive and kicking. How are you feeling, doggy? <laughs> oh, I'm so full. She looks sick. It's all my fault. I took her to that wretched pizza place again. A pizza place, you say? Who doesn't like pizza? Love me some pizza, but you gotta be careful eating pizza if you have gallstones. Greasy cheese food is not good for your gallbladder because it forces your gallbladder to work and excrete bile. And if you have gallstones, it's gonna make your pain in your right upper quadrant of your abdomen more painful. People don't realize that. Yeah, the, the Chattanooga cheese explosion over on Avenue Boulevard. Oh, that place. It always upsets the Tumsies with all the games and the music and the pizza. If you actually eat a lot of cheese as well, guess what it causes? Constipation. Flogs you up just like a plug. She had two cheese pizzas with the mozzarella blasted crust, a large bowl of pizza soup, and a jumbo marinara soda. Oh my gosh, I love it. Look at his doodle leg and he's showing her like a muscular body of himself. I love it. Hey, uh, Boo Boo, uh, we should get a sample of that pizza. It'll run some tests on it. Oh, I, I don't know if that's necessary. Hang tight, guys. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, sorry I went on this whole tangent about pizza. I love pizza and I haven't had it in a little while. So me and the wife need to travel and go somewhere good where there's good pizza. And I feel I'm going to have it in my future soon. These are funny. Okay, a little wrong type of medicine, not very accurate. But it gave us the opportunity to discuss some good medical topics. If you guys like this video, you gotta check out this one. You're really gonna like it. And as always, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.